All right. Good morning, everybody. It is 10 o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started to be a cognizant based time. It is Thursday, October 15th, and welcome to the latest edition of the Alibi Security Live webinar series. I am Chris Miller. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Alibi Security. Excited to be with you guys today, and we are thrilled to be presenting our Alibi Vigilant line of cameras and recorders. It's a brand new line that we've just brought on in the last month. And we're going to go in a lot of detail on the composition of the line, um, you know, uh, a lot of the features and functionality of the new line. And we've got a couple of key presenters here that will uh, give you all the detail you need to really understand the line card and, and how these uh, products perform. Uh, but before we get to Patrick and Norman, uh, for those of you who are new to Alibi Security, just want to give you a quick overview of who we are. Um, you know, we are a value-added technology provider, right? We, we want to add value to your business and bring you solutions that help you grow. That's our main focus. We, we want to we be your source for uh, providing expertise, great quality gear, and video and audio surveillance, uh, access control, and lately, uh, we've been adding some new cloud-based security services to our portfolio in order to give you guys a more robust offering to continue to grow your business. Um, we do heavily invest in being partners for your business. We have senior dedicated account managers. Our, our sales team is second to none in the industry, seniority beyond belief. Uh, I think our average tenure is like eight, seven or eight years, if not more. We have US-based technical support that's really important. Uh, we strive to have 90 second hold times and technical support. And more importantly, it's based right here in Austin, Texas. So you're gonna be able to get a hold of somebody r really quickly and get your problem solved. Uh, in addition to those two key areas of support for your business, we also offer some professional marketing services through our Alibi Arsenal program. So if marketing is not your forte, it's not something that you're really excited about, you don't have a lot of time to manage. We have a turnkey uh, business enablement uh, digital marketing solution that can help you grow your business, grow your leads and grow your local awareness. So that's something, uh, if you're interested in that, you need to reach out to your dedicated account manager about that. And then, as I mentioned on the cloud services side of things, we're, we're continuing to bring new RMR opportunities to, to you so you can grow your business, so you can continue to grow that mailbox money. And um, we just got done with a webinar about our uh, um, system health monitoring, which is a new solution that we just rolled out. So we have a big focus on developing and launching new solutions to help you guys uh, tap into uh, new opportunities in the marketplace. And you know, the, the, the other key part of this is we've been doing this since 1989. So we understand what dealers need. We understand what, what you guys are looking for out there in the marketplace. And we pride ourselves on being in the business for 30 years and uh, seeing how uh, the industry has changed and grown and more importantly, trying to be on the forefront of new solutions in the marketplace. So we, we thank you guys for being here. And more importantly, um, we've got Norman and Patrick with us. They're two of our product managers. They've got tons of experience in the industry, more than 25 years. Uh, both of these guys understand the challenges that dealers face out in the marketplace, right? Our dealer partners and integrator partners, um, you know, they've interfaced with Norman and Patrick over the years because they both started off in technical support. So they bring a lot of great knowledge to the table as they are working on developing solutions and products to help you guys meet your needs. You know, they understand the sales engineering and support questions that you guys are going to have that our sales team is going to have. So whenever they're designing product solutions, they have those things in mind as they're building and developing those. And Norman specifically oversees all, uh, the development of all of our edge, edge devices. So, you know, we call him the camera guy, but he does a lot more than that. He's been an integral part of developing and uh, bringing to market this entire line in conjunction with Patrick, whose main focus is really overseeing all of our recording devices. So these guys together will walk through our entire new line and go into great detail on the features and attributes of our new Vigilant line, which we're super excited about. Now, as we go through this, and before I hand it off to Norman and Patrick, um, 
you know, if there are questions along the way, and again, we, we have tons of slides here. We're going to go into great de depth into all the cameras, all the recorders, um, features and functionality, specialty cameras. Hopefully we answer most of your questions along the way. If we don't, uh, use the Q&A feature down at the bottom of your uh, webinar. That's where we'll tackle any uh, outstanding questions at the end of the webinar. We'll, like I said, we'll save those to the end because typically we do a really good job of addressing those along the way. So again, any questions, submit them down in the Q&A and we'll get to them at the end of the session. And again, before I hand it off to Norman and Patrick, you know, I think one key question that a lot of our dealer partners may have is, well, okay, we've got this new vigilant line. Well, what about the Alibi Witness line, right? That was our existing line of products that we've rebranded Alibi Witness. Well, we continue to support this line, right? We continue to support and develop and bring new products to market under this line. And as a matter of fact, under the Alibi Witness line, um, you know, there's still software firmware development that's going on there. We, we're just introducing about to launch a new uh, hallway camera which is really cool. It's a, a, a two lens camera one, you know, they kind of point uh, 180 degrees away from each other. Perfect for hallway installations to capture uh, both ends of the hallway. So this is not a line that we're getting rid of, right? We're continuing to develop and support this line. It's just, as we looked at um, the marketplace and uh, opportunities to uh, bring together a new line, uh, the Vigilant line kind of fit the bill to, to bring together some new features and functionality and also some new demands in the marketplace that will help you guys continue to grow your business. And, you know, as it relates to the Alibi Witness line, as I mentioned before, we just finished up a system health monitoring webinar. It's a solution that we've developed specifically for the Alibi Witness line at this time. So, uh, you know, the Alibi Witness line is not going anywhere anytime soon and we're continuing to develop and bring new solutions to bear around that line. But you know, uh, as we talk about Alibi Vigilant, I want to hand it over to Norman because you know he was he was the the main um, market researcher, the main developer of this product line, and he can kind of let you guys know exactly what features and functionality that we saw in Vigilant that said, hey, you know what, it's time for a new line of product to help our dealer partners grow their business. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Um, but yeah, as we as I kind of follow up with what Chris was mentioning is, uh, you know, we looked at this line, there are some features that we saw that was, you know, comparable to what we offer in the witness line, but there's other uh, things that we saw that we liked uh, as far as say like how intuitive the interface was. Um, there's also uh, plug and play compatibility that we have now in this new vigilant line where we could plug and play to um, other brands or even an on viv type camera. Uh, uh, very easily. Uh, so that's existing cameras that are already, say, out there installed. It's, uh, you'll be able to basically migrate those over to our system. Um, you know, things from like enhanced optics that will give you clearer pictures down to maybe even lower f-stop to give you lower light rating uh, so you can see better in the, in the dark. Um, and even down to enhanced analytics. Um, when I mentioned that is, you know, Compared to the past, we had have certain analytics like human or vehicle detection in a certain specific line of cameras. Uh, you know, there might be a certain costing uh, uh, plus that would come into that, you know, that you would have to factor in for something like that. Uh, with the Vigilant line, we actually have human detection built into our uh, Flex line, which is our kind of our entry to mid-level line of products, and that has human detection built in. Uh, so the main advantage of that is you could reduce any kind of false alarm recordings from you know, shadows, trees, rain, or just any uh, pixel change uh, that would cause normal motion to start recording. Uh, so this way we could save hard drive space, save searching space, uh, and then get more accurate alerts. Uh, the other cool thing is, as Chris mentioned, is, you know, we, we listened to dealer feedback. Um, we wanted to make sure, you know, we have training, some, training monthly, uh, we get feedback from dealer, and that's what we're hoping to get after this training as well. But uh, one of the big things that everybody was asking for was cloud updating. Hey, I'm, you know, I'm tired of making sure I'm on the right firmware, downloading the firmware from a certain website, or I'm getting a firmware passed over from a tech support guy. I need to unzip it, zip it, put in a certain folder, uh, get it to the customer somehow now, and then get into their machine. Hopefully nothing goes wrong during that process. Uh, so just like with your, your, your iPhone or with your Samsung phone, uh, whenever there's an update, you get a little icon that maybe says, hey, there's an update, would you like to update? Uh, and that's something that we have built into the Vigilant line. 
uh, from the smartphone app. Uh, we have little icons that would alert you if your camera or your recorder needs updating. Uh, and then also within the recorder, there's an option to check uh, firmware for updates as well. Yeah, I, I, hey Norman, I, I think that's a, a great call out, you know, because we get a lot of questions from our dealer partners about firmware updating and can I do it remotely or do I need to be on site? And, you know, we'll always tell you, uh, especially for, you know, our, like our alibi witness line, it's always safer to do it on site, right? Because you're going to have uninterrupted firmware updates. You don't have to worry about connectivity issues and it kind of getting halfway through and then you know, crapping out on you. So, you know, as Norman and the team approach this line, you know, ease of use, um, you know, ease of interface use was kind of front and center for one of the reasons that they made the decision to bring on this new line, right? We've kind of challenged ourselves to uh, find more modern, intuitive user interfaces just to make it easier for you guys and for your co consumers to use the solutions once they're installed. And, you know, one of the things I want to elaborate a little bit on from a plug and play compatibility perspective is that, you know, the Vigilant line does give us cross compatibility where witness cameras can absolutely work on Vigilant recorders, right? We don't have that same compatibility kind of the, in the reverse way. But when, if you have a, a customer that you've installed witness products on, right? And they want, they want to or need to upgrade a recorder, you can go suggest an Alibi Vigilant recorder because those witness cameras will plug and play. And when you go out to the Alibi Security website, we're trying to make it real uh, easy to see what cross compatibility is, uh, is uh, kind of built into our lines. Uh, on each of the product pages. So you should see what products work, work with what when you go out to our website. So it, it's just an important part to give you guys more flexibility when you're selling the solutions. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, with, with, with that, uh, you know, we have the MSTAR chipset. Uh, you might ask what, you know, what the MSTAR chipset is. Uh, that's basically an SOC that's built into the camera uh, that is NDA compliant. Uh, just to touch a little bit about the NDA compliant, uh, the federal government uh, passed a National Defense Act, the NDA Act, uh, this August 20, uh, 2020, uh, that banned certain entities of hardware or technologies within, uh, within that line. Uh, so certain product lines might not be compatible for the federal government for certain projects or funding. Um, and that's, that's, but this particular line is uh, not from one of those companies and it's not using any of those technologies. Yeah, that, that, that's really important. Um, and it was a big consideration in this line as well as making sure that we met the technical requirements as, as part of the NDAA. Um, you'll, see, you'll see a lot of momentum in the industry around this. You know, we've, we've seen some of our competitors talking about coming soon. Well, our, our product management team has been at the forefront of this. This is built into the products that we're selling right now. You don't have to wait. If you're a prime contractor, you need to be ultimately diligent about understanding NDAA, what that means from an equipment perspective and from a compliance perspective. But we've got a large assortment of our Alibi Vigilant product line. The entire Flex, the Alibi Vigilant Flex line is uh, M star built with the M star chipsets and then a good chunk of the performance. And as we roll through the line cards, we'll highlight which of these products are built with M star and are therefore technically compliant with NDAA. All right. Um, as we kind of go into the line, you know, it's a complete line of cameras and recorders. Uh, you know, the cameras we cover all the way up to a 4k resolution. Uh, we also have Starlight models, which was really popular on our witness line. Uh, we, you know, the feedback from dealers is we want Starlight. So uh, we have Starlight in this line. And I could tell you that the, the, the performance coming from the Starlight models is, is outstanding. We're, we'll have uh, sample images and videos coming out soon. Uh, if you talk to your account rep, they could share some example images with you today if you wanted to take a look right away just to see the difference. Uh, from the daytime to nighttime with IR, without IR, uh, and maybe even a comparison to one of our other uh, cameras or our competitor's camera. Um, the other thing is we also cover up to 128 channel uh, recorders, so from a four channel MVR all the way up to 128, and then we have some hybrid recorders in there for you as well, so you could say migrate some analog cameras over or HD analog over. Uh, you know, standard, H, uh, we have ultra H.265 compression, save about 80% of your hard drive or bandwidth. 
uh, long distance PoE, which was uh, something that we saw was an added plus uh, to this line. And then just the, the really key part is just the, intu the intuitive in interface. Uh, it's very easy to use. Uh, it's very simple to get cameras up and running. Uh, it's was, it was very simple for me to migrate my witness line over to this vigilant line. Uh, I had a certain cameras that were either had special features that I didn't want to take down or they were hard to get to. So I was able to keep those up and running and migrate those over. So very easy to use. Yeah, good morning, everybody. This is Patrick. Um, and with our, our recorder lineup, um, we like to, we talk about the, uh, the ease of use and, and the um, user-friendly uh, setup it is. Um, plug and play is very simple. Um, even cameras out on the network are easy, just one click adding. Um, we mentioned cloud updating. I'm already seeing questions coming in. Um, one of them I can answer for you is um, you will get uh, not necessarily a notification, but in the mobile app, you'll see a little indicator, a blue dot that will let you uh, see that there is a, a firmware available, whether it's the NVR itself or the IP cameras attached to that NVR. And you can, um, it will not automatically upgrade. Uh, that was one of the questions. You will be, uh, you will have to actually initiate that firmware upgrade, whether it's local at the machine or through the mobile app. Um, so we'll not do it automatically. Um, you will have to, to initialize it, but it will indicate that there is one available. Um, we mentioned the, the H.265 compression and the, the U code. Um, that helps definitely compress the video and helps for streaming and for storage purposes. On our models with the uh, plug and play ports, the built in plug and play switch, um, there is an option for the long distance PoE, which allows you to, to run up to 820 feet. Um, so you can extend your, your transmission runs there. Um, and then a storage system built in uh, for these recorders. Um, they use a, a block system versus a, maybe a typical file system storage, um, which allows for better efficiency and um, reduced data loss and, and better playback. So we can move on. Yeah, so we, uh, we have the line split up into a flex series and a performance series. Uh, you know, the flex series is what I mentioned earlier, where we, we have uh, human detection built into the entire line uh, for the IP camera side. Uh, with the flex series, you're going to find, you know, there's going to be cost effective uh, models. Uh, so there's going to be models in there that are not starlight, uh, you know, so maybe say two, four, uh, eight megapixel resolutions and different form factors. Um, but, you know, great for residential, small to medium sized businesses. Uh, so just that one, you know, take a look at that. You'll see the price is very attractive, uh, but the performance, you're not losing out on any performance again. Uh, so human detection, Starlight built into some of those. And on a performance series, we, we, we go a little bit more into like WDR, audio, uh, alarm IO, built in microphones, uh, more industrial housing, uh, better optics, uh, motorized verifocal uh, options and so on. Yeah, and, and Norman, I, I just want to reiterate, you know, in the Flex series, I think you guys have, have done an exceptional job of bringing more full-featured cameras into the mix, right? You know, when you look at the, the witness value line, really great price, really great performance, not as feature-rich. With our Flex, Flex series, really great performance, exceptionally great price, exceptionally great feature set, right? So you're actually getting more for less money with our Flex series than, than, than you ever have before. Yeah, I guess the old school, more buck for the bang. Uh, for sure, with the Flex series, you will yeah. see that. It's, it's, it's comparable to, you know, the, some of the witness line, you know, the, uh, not the value line, but say some of our Starlight models. And again, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's different, uh, different use case for different, different um, models, but uh, very outstanding performance from both of these lines here. Yeah, I'd like to mention too, the, uh, in the Flex line, um, all the models in the Flex series have human body detection, um, which is more you know, advanced analytics. So it can uh, help um, for faster playback searching and, um, and reduce false alerts with motion. That's all right. That's, yeah. Uh, you know, with the Alibi line, with the Vigilant software, it's, it's similar to what we offer on the witness side. We make sure, you know, we have uh, the Vigilant toolbox, which Patrick worked really hard on, making sure everything worked really well, but down from this device discovery, uh, you know, firmware upgrading, uh, maintenance bandwidth storage calculator all built in there down to our multi-client uh, and to our, our mobile app as well. Uh, the mobile app is very easy to use, very intuitive as we mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, as 
the PTP connection, uh, you'll have automatic firmware upgrading. Uh, so that way, there was a question earlier, you know, will it automatically upgrade? Uh, no, there's going to be an icon uh, that gives you the option to upgrade or not. And that way you could you could control your system, how, you know, yourself. But at least you have now you have an indicator uh, that will be there for you. And then I think on the app, it's going to be, uh, there's a blue dot indicator next to the camera or next to the recorder uh, to let you know that, hey, there's a firmware option available for this. Um, and then the Vision player, um, that's, that's our software player uh, that will allow you to export and download videos, as well as uh, there's some cool things where you're allowed, able to merge files very easily with that one. Uh, what, was there anything else I missed on that one, Patrick? I think there's. I just some wanted to, to call out um, with the cloud updating, um, a peer-to-peer -peer connection is required um, to use this feature. If you're used to the traditional port forwarding and adding by either an IP address or, or DDNS, um, to the mobile app, that cloud upgrading feature is not available. So we strongly encourage our dealers and end, use, end users to uh, to enable a peer-to-peer -peer service. Um, and with this line, it actually there is advantages versus the witness line. Um, whereas in the witness line, um, remote connection through peer-to-peer -peer is not available through the web browser. Uh, yes. A lot of people like the web browser interface. Um, there is a feature with this line through the peer-to-peer -peer service to access remotely from a web browser. Um, it requires you to log into your peer-to-peer your -peer account first um, through the star4live.com um, website. And then from there, you can access any recorders connected to your account um, and then open up a web page. Um, same through the, through the CMS client as well. There is a, an icon to launch a web browser through the, through the CMS client. But again, peer-to-peer -peer connection is required. Um, and it's more secure. Um, you don't have to worry about port forwarding. It's quick and easy. So we, we highly recommend it. Yeah, we're, we're always going to recommend peer-to-peer -peer over port forwarding any day of the week just because it's fundamentally more secure. And I think you go into a little bit more detail on that functionality later on too, don't you, Patrick? I will, yeah. There, there yeah. are some slides that kind of show yeah. you. It's a great call out. And one question I think we answer right now too, you know, so if I put witness cameras on a Vigilant NVR, there's nothing that changes about how those cameras show up in the CMS, right? I mean, they show up, you know, it, it, you're able to kind of view them and manage them just like you would a Vigilant camera, correct? As long as you're adding the NVR, the Vigilant NVR yes. to the CMS, yes, that's, that's no problem. Um, the Vigilant CMS will not recognize, it cannot add a, a uh, witness uh, camera a witness camera or NVR. That's right. But yeah, easy to migrate that over. So if you have, you know, the cameras, you migrate them over to the MVR. The Vigilant CMS will see that just like anything else. Yeah. I think what Patrick is talking about, we'll, we'll talk on it or cover a little bit more, but uh, the, the remote configuration option, either, either through the phone app or through the browser, uh, you have options of, say, you know, adjusting your motion detection or, or adjusting other features that we didn't have before where you have to actually be on site or, 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 or remotely logged in. So just, just some other things that make it a little bit easier to, uh, to get this system up and running. Go to the next slide. Now, this is just the lineup of the IP camera uh, for the Flex Series and Performance line. It gives you an idea of what's what's in the lineup. Um, so, on the Flex Series IP camera side, you know we have some Wi-Fi bullets, uh, two, four, eight megapixel uh, fixed dome uh, bullet and turret form factors, some verifocal models, um, and then as we kind of go into the, to the Performance Series, we cover that same lineup. We you know add a wedge to that. Uh, and then there's some PTZs with panoramics that we added to the lineup. Um, and once we're able to share the, the roadmap with you guys, we'll, we'll have more information on that for you guys. But uh, we are growing this line, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, from 2 meg all the way up to 8 meg, fixed to ver focal. We'll have models with uh, built-in microphones default now, uh, you know, all again, all the way up to 8 megapixel. Uh, we cover PTZs. Uh, you'll see a lot of, uh, we have a lot of, a lot of five meg or two meg uh, indoor PTZ options, as well as uh, fisheye models that you guys are, you know, very popular on the witness side. So from a five to 12 meg, as well as a nice panoramic camera. Um, yeah, and I think on the, the PTZ side, I think you guys are looking at bringing on some outdoor models as well. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, we'll have, um, we'll cover it a little bit more, but we'll have some uh, options with a Illuminite technology, which is a white light technology incorporating starlight. Uh, so that way you get a 24 seven color picture. Uh, and I can tell you just without the white light, uh, as long as you have some light out there, ambient light, star, you know, starlight, moonlight, 
uh, it sees fairly well. Uh, but you know, turning on that white light just helps helps increase that performance. Uh, so more to come on that for sure. Uh, so on this Vigilant Flex series, uh, we here's a little bit more of a breakout of the SKUs. Uh, so the F, the ALI FB, which just stands for Flex Bullet, we have that in a two, four, eight, as well as in some Wi-Fi models. Uh, you know, we'll cover individual SKUs here in a minute, um, and then motorized varifocal lenses within the Flex series. We broke it out like this so you can kind of just get an overview really quick. Uh, and again, you know, we're going to go this line. If you guys have feedback on what you'd like to see next, you know. Please provide that here at the end of this webinar. And, and, and again, we've organized the entire flex line to be M star. So these are all meet the technical requirements for NDAA. Just we'll continue to remind you guys of that. And again, yeah. we're going to have the M star icon and all the ones that are compliant. Yeah, just keep a lookout for that M star icon for sure. Yeah. Uh, so as we kind of get into the flex line, this is our fixed bullet. We have it in a two, four, and eight megapixel. Uh, we did go with a 2.8 millimeter lens on this model. Notice the different field of views between the three uh, di different resolutions, but all over 100 degrees field of view. Uh, they all have about roughly 100 foot smart IR range. Uh, and then certain models will have a digital WDR versus a true WDR. Uh, so again, if you need true WDR, the 8 meg will, will offer that for you. Uh, we support uh, the different compressions. Again, up to the Ultra H.265 will provide 80% bandwidth savings as well as hard drive savings. Uh, we support uh, OnVid Profile S and T as well. Uh, very nice housing. Um, there's a wing nut uh, type lock on the back, cable management uh, type bracket as well. Uh, again, this particular model, uh, this lineup, this is again our entry lineup or from the two, four, and eight megapixel will all have at least human body detection built in. Uh, so again, this is in our Flex series, uh, human body detection is built into this model, into this lineup. Uh, and it'll still support your motion or tampering or intrusion, but I think the, the key part is, you know, we're offering some type of advanced uh, analytic to where you could deter false recording or, or deter uh, false alarms, which is really key in our industry. And that's the number one feedback that we, that we get from you guys a lot. Yeah, it's the number one request, right? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, just so everybody's aware, you know, we've got tons of product to go through. So I've asked Norman and, and Patrick as they go through each of their respective areas areas of specialty just kind of hit on the highlights and all, all the spec sheets all the details that are reflected on these slides are also available in our in our downloadable spec sheets online so if you want a more detailed look at specs um, you know I'm always going to encourage you guys to go online go into your login download spec sheets to really kind of get all the details on every one of these individual products. But I've asked these guys to kind of hit the highlights so we can get through all these things because we've got not only product, but software to go through as well. Exactly, so uh, it might seem I'm rushing through it, but uh, you know, we'll make sure we'll answer any questions. But as Chris mentioned, a uh, lot more information, more, more detailed information is on, online. Uh, and then we could get it to you as well through your account rep. Uh, this just is our Vigilant Wi-Fi models. So we have those available in a two and a four meg. Uh, you know, key thing to notice, not PoE, uh, they require 12 volts power supply, uh, but really cool way of getting these up and running. There's a QR code uh, that the camera would basically read from your cell phone uh, through the app. It would then add it online that way, and then you could then integrate that into your NVR. Uh, there is a standard Ethernet connection, so you could hardwire that in as well. Micro SD card support. Um, as Patrick mentioned earlier, it has the EBS built in, so in case you lose network, um, the information would record onto SD card. Once the network connection connects back, it would then dump it back to the recorder side. And that's what the entire Vigilant line uh, is built in with the, with the Vigilant recorders. Uh, this is our Flex Dome series, similar to the bullets that I was covering earlier, just in a dome form factor. Again, available in two, four, and eight megapixel. Uh, go to the next slide, Chris. Um, IP67 on all of those. Uh, same thing for the turret, um, you know, the, the dome and turret are popular models for us, uh, available in a 2, 4, and 8. Um, same thing, multi-axis, and then human detection built in, IP60 housing on all these. This is our uh, varifocal model. We have it available in a 2 and a 4 megapixel, uh, 2.8 to 12 millimeter motorized autofocus lens. Uh, so you basically zoom in motorized through the app or through your browser or at the unit, 
get to your field of view, wait a few seconds, uh, I think it's about a second, it'll, it'll kind of back, back in, back out, and then it'll, it'll be in focus. Uh, same thing, cable management bracket. Uh, so this makes it a very secure, very clean install. Um, and junction boxes and uh, different mounting options are available for the entire line as well. This is the Verifocal Dome series. So same specs as the Bullet series that we just covered uh, as far as lens and resolution. Uh, you can see the field of view, IR range, and then an uh, IP67 IK10 impact resistant housing. And again, human detection built in and everything we've covered so far. This is our lineup for the performance series. Uh, we have fixed lens models, bullet, dome, turret, and then uh, motorized, same form factor as well. Uh, with this, this is our Starlight series. You'll notice the, uh, the dash U at the end will indicate a low light or uh, ultra low light series. Uh, these, uh, we do have some video samples or image examples of these uh, that you could uh, talk to your account rep to, to take a look at. We will have video and uh, some other marketing uh, uh, videos coming out soon for those. Uh, but yeah, 2 and 4 meg, 2.8 millimeter lens. Um, and these have an exceptional long IR range, 164 foot. Um, and that's because of the advanced optics. Uh, the Osram LED, uh, IR LEDs that we're using with using with the Starlight chipset as well. I could tell you that the turning this, the IRs off, the camera is very impressive at night, uh, just with a little bit of ambient light around it, surrounding it, but turning on the IRs, is, everything's very crisp. Um, you got, we have uh, the two bullet series. If you notice the one on the left is a four meg with a dash A, uh, that one has a built-in microphone uh, and then the one on the right is our eight megapixel model. Uh, again, if we'll, we'll try to go with 2.8 on most models. There are certain models where, because of certain optics or uh, certain form factor or housing factors, we'll, we have to go with a different lens. Uh, but we also kind of change it around maybe to give you a little bit tighter field of view because you don't want something so, uh, so wide, you might want to maybe focus on a doorway or, or some little bit tighter hallway area. So that's why we, we narrowed it down on this one. Uh, but same thing, cable management bracket. Um, we're good, Chris. Go to the next one. Uh, next is our turret and dome. Again, the, the U indicates it either supports audio or has a microphone built in. Uh, this starlight. is like, starlight. Or starlight, I'm sorry. Uh, this is the starlight models. Um, we have a two meg and a dome and a two meg and a turret. Uh, and both of these will support human uh, body detection. Uh, the other thing to call out was the 256 gig uh, micro SD card support, which is, is, is from our testing, it's worked out fairly well. Uh, if you guys know there's a uh, good reason to add any kind of backup or adding SD card is for backup recording. Uh, you know, just in case something does happen to your system, information can be stored onto the micro SD card. Uh, and then again, just in case you have some type of network loss, uh, information can dump on there and then retrieve it back on the a recorder. Uh, on the right-hand side, we have our PM40, which is our, our wedge dome. Uh, this has a built-in microphone. Uh, this is more of a low-profile dome, uh, really po popular for a front door entrance way. If you notice, it is uh, indoor only. And it's one of our models that support cable-free uh, management. So there's no cables coming out of it. You basically make your termination inside of it. Uh, and, and that's just due to the form factor, uh, low-profile mount, and so on. Uh, next, we'll cover the Pro Series. This is our, uh, with our, within our turret, we have the 4 meg with audio. Uh, so keep that in mind for you guys that like microphones built into cameras. Uh, that one does support on the left side. Um, and then the other one is the 4 meg with, and then the 8 meg on the right hand side. Uh, we try to pick the same form factor for the turret housings. And that way, uh, it's the same look, same install, uh, and then the same, same accessories as well. Hey, yeah. Norman, uh, real quick question. I think we can answer here as we're rolling through all the lines. Somebody, someone asked to explain the difference between the Starlight and M-Star real quick. Okay, yeah. Uh, so just, I know it's kind of, it might be a little confusing. It is even internally. Uh, so Starlight is the, is going to give you the low light performance. Uh, M-Star is the technology that's built into the camera that, that is NDA compliant. So hopefully that answers that. Star is the SOC. This is the that's inside that, that process the, the, uh, the information for the IP camera. 
Starlight Chip is basically a, a performance feature that's built in some of our cameras for low light features. So hopefully that answered the question. Yeah, cool. All right, let me go to the next slide. Uh, this is our Vigilant Pro Series. Um, so what you'll see here is uh, similar form factor is going to be a little bit larger housing, um, better optics, true WDR, uh, all that's supported. Again, IP67, uh, cable management with everything. We're pretty much, I think we don't have anything that's, that has any kind of cables exposed, uh, which should be a standard today, uh, but you'll be surprised. You'll still see some models out there where it leaves cables exposed where they're vulnerable. Um, alarm audio, IO built into both of these, so they do support that. Um, if you want to use any kind of access control or built-in mic or two-way audio that, that is built that is built into the both of these. Uh, and then again, notice at the bottom for any of the special. So if you needed it, if you need a little bit more, uh, say uh, face and face or face detection or, or some other special features like people counting, uh, we do have those uh, in our pro series. Next slide. Stuck. Yep, I did. All right, uh, so this is the four meg and uh, eight meg, same, similar um, information as far as what I covered earlier uh, on the other models. So there's different form factors or different resolutions. Again, if you need uh, different analytics like people counting or face detection, we do offer that in the XD series. This is our Pro Series Verifocal Turret Line. Um, same, same thing as far as the previous one. We offer a four and eight meg, 2.8 to 12. Uh, both of these will support built-in microphones. Uh, the one on the left if, if is MSTAR compliant. Uh, the, one on the, the one on the right is not. Uh, so just keep that in mind as you're kind of looking through. There's a few models where we're gonna rev through uh, that will basically have to rev to an MSTAR solution. So. Uh, as we move forward with the visual line, you're pretty much going to see, you know, pretty much a hundred percent uh, offering that's all MSTAR, but there are a few models trickled in there for certain features that we need for certain applications. Uh, this is the performance series specialty camera lineup. Uh, with the, within this line, we have something new that we didn't offer in the other one. Uh, this is a pan tilt bullet. So basically it's a bullet camera that will pan and tilt. Uh, we'll cover that here in a minute. Some PTZ models from two to five meg, uh, built-in microphones, Wi-Fi options in some of those, uh, five and a 12 meg fisheye, and then a 4K panoramic uh, that we'll cover here next. Uh, this is the Pantil Bullet. Um, this one here uh, from use case, it seems uh, very, will be very popular, built-in memory. Uh, so it does have 32 gigabyte built-in already, 164 foot smart IR. This one does have a fixed lens. Uh, but I think the advantage of this, if you, you know, look at the cost uh, compared to like a PTZ, uh, you can stick this camera out front for the cost of, say, a normal bullet camera almost. But now you have the options of, of panning or tilting the camera lens. And this gives some of you, maybe some of your customers are asking for this feature, uh, but they don't want to spend the thousands of dollars that a PTZ would cost. Uh, but this might help you guys gain a little bit more uh, margin or, or help you you know, get the bill up a little bit more by offering something with a little bit more features. Uh, so again, this camera is fixed lens, available in a four meg, um, alarm audio IO, WDR built in, built in memory, uh, but it gives you options of panning and tilting and the specs over there on the right hand side. Uh, so you got a number of presets, patrols that you could run on these as well. I think it's really, co really cool camera uh, that I think you'll we'll see a lot of traction on this year. Uh, this is the PTZ lineup. Uh, all available in the uh, MSTAR. Um, we have available in a two meg, uh, all the way up to five meg. And the thing that you're gonna notice is some of them will have, uh, we have, I think we have built-in Wi-Fi on the five meg on the right-hand side. Uh, so notice that one will have pretty much all the features. So that one will, it's gonna give you five megapixel. It's giving a 2.7 to 13 millimeter lens, uh, 100 foot of IR, built-in microphone and speaker. I think that's the only one we have with those built-in microphone and speaker. Alarm IO, WDR, micro SD card support, again, sports Wi Fi. Um, the only thing I'm wrong there is there's a typo, it's IP67, that's not correct. So just FYI, I think that's one that we, we've caught, but uh, somehow got in there. 
just, just notate that everyone. We are working on outdoor models again with the white light. Uh, that's, that's coming really soon. So just, just keep that in mind. Uh, but again, very cost competitive models here for indoor applications. Uh, a lot of customers are looking for, uh, you know, PTZ options, low profile, little um, dome type PTZs that you'll, that you don't really want to be too noticeable, but you don't want it to be too tiny. So these are, when I say small, they're not, they're not like a baseball size. They're still a, a good size camera, but they're not as big as a normal PTZ. Uh, again, MSTAR available, Starlight supported in uh, the, the, the the, middle, the model in the middle and the one on the right, so the two and five legs. This is our performance series fisheye camera. Uh, we have a five meg as well as a, a 12 meg. Uh, the five meg uses a software de-warping uh, versus the 12 meg is hardware. Uh, so there's a little bit difference there, but you know, if you're using our player or our, our uh, our software, you're able to manipulate on playback and pretty much looks the same on either one. Uh, but just more features on the on the 12 meg, uh, higher resolution, and that's what we usually recommend, especially since you're going fisheye. Uh, everything is kind of you know zoomed out. It's such extreme field of view. Go with a higher megapixel. That way you have the pixel density when you do zoom in, or when you do split up your views into different angles, say like into a quad view or into a panoramic view. And that way you're not losing out on that on, on the image quality. Uh, compared to if you went to a five meg, you know, that's perfect for smaller environments, maybe somewhere where you just need to see an overall view. Uh, but just that one, you say that one doesn't, it's a fisheye only. Yeah. It doesn't have the extra EPTZ views and, and so yeah. forth. Uh, and then next is our, our panoramic camera, uh, or this is the 4K model. This one basically has four uh, four millimeter lens built into it uh, that will give you a, a basically a 180 degree coverage is stitched together. Um, this is uh, a 164 foot smart IR. This does use a starlight chipset as well, so it sees outdoor very well. Uh, without the mounting bracket, it's, it's, it uses an arm mounting bracket that would mount underneath and then attach to a wall. We have a different type of uh, parapet, it's a J type bracket available for it as well. Uh, Built-in micro SD card slot. Um, this one does not support PoE. Comes with a power supply, um, so just keep that in mind. IP67 rated. Uh, the anal the analytics are down here. You got people counting all the way to your basic motion. Hey Norman, on the uh, on this specific camera, and then the previous fish eye. How many how many channels do each of those cameras take up? Uh, this one will take one, but on the fisheye, the 12 meg will uh, take up to four. Okay. Uh, the five meg is just the fisheye view, and that's the one where I said in the software we have an option of de-warping it, but it records in the fisheye view, and then on playback you have the option of kind of digitally zooming in to that fisheye to give you a, a more enhanced uh, overview. Gotcha, but that, that only takes up one channel on the five meg. That's correct. Yeah, cool. And then it's the software that's actually creating the de-warping. On the five meg, yeah, yeah. but the 12 yeah. and the, this one will, it's all hardware based. Yeah, I'll go ahead and take over. This is a, a recorder lineup, um, very similar to, to the Witness lineup. Um, but we'll have a Flex series, um, a four, eight and 16 channel. Um, and then in the performance, you know, we have a, a 16 um, and a 32 that have built-in PoE switches, and then a 32 and 64 with are with non, uh, not a no, no built-in PoE switch, um, but it offers dual LAN connections to add cameras via network, and, and you can segregate the network um, and the cameras. Then as well as a, that our 128 channel um, Super NVR. And then also on the uh, on our hybrid side, um, we have offer three options as well, a 4, 8, and 16 channel. While we currently don't sell any um, analog cameras in the digital line, we are working to bring some on, um, but they do support the, all the HDTPI, CDBS, AHD, um, CVI, all the, all the technologies um, for HD. Yeah, so, so as our dealer partners out there looking at the line, you know, we've created enough flexibility in this line like the witness line to cover the simplest to the most complex enterprise level 
installations, right? That 128 channel recorder and the visual lines, super robust. And there's actually you know, some additional accessories that go with that that help you tackle more elaborate enterprise installations like video walls even more seamlessly than in the past. So it's, it's a real flexible uh, recorder line that gives you guys the ability just to, to sell to all potential customers. So yeah, taking a deeper dive here in these uh, in our Flex series. Um, again, MSTAR uh, compliant, um, four, eight, and 16 channel models. Um, up to eight megapixel recording. Um, you see the hard drive base on the four and eight channels, only one, um, up to 14 terabytes. And on 16 channel, we offer two hard drive bays. Um, and then listed out the, the POE budget um, for adding, for you know, plug and playing the cameras. There is a budget you have to look, look at um, when, when adding cameras. Um, incoming and outgoing bandwidth compared to the witness line, um, you, you may see some differences. Um, if you're comparing models side by side, um, you may notice the outgoing bandwidth may be um, not as not as forgiving or not as you know robust as the uh, as the witness line. But these recorders do offer um, three streams, um, and you can actually record it. Defaults to record it a mainstream and a third stream, um, which offers you know um, the flexibility to view remotely on a lower stream. Um, in conjunction with the H.265 compression, um, it's able, you're able to get away with it because of those features built into the recorder. And moving to our performance line, um, our 16 and 32 channel with the built-in PoE switch, um, both have four hard drive bays, up to eight megapixel recording. Um, again, you'll see the incoming and outgoing bandwidth. Um, again, you may, you may think it's small, but um, there's ways uh, it compensates for it. And also just to call out that the 32 channel has 16 uh, POE ports. So the remaining 16 channels will need to be brought in um, over the, the local network, which is again, easy one click, one click adding. Um, and our models uh, without the built-in POE switch, as I mentioned, you have two LAN ports on there. So one can be for your main network and then a second, your second LAN connection uh, can be dedicated for your cameras. So it segregates the, the camera traffic um, not to interfere with your, your the main network itself on site. Um, these models go up to 12 megapixel recording. Um, we have a second HDMI output um, up to 4K. So you can have a secondary monitor displaying say a different group of cameras than the say, HDMI one VGA. Um, we have RAID configurations on these as well. As you can see the options. Um, eight hard drives for the 32, 16 for the 64. And then the incoming and outgoing bandwidth um, definitely goes up on these models. So um, it helps with, with remote viewing and so forth and incoming adding cameras. And then um, the 128 channel recorder, um, similar to the, the one we offer on the witness line of the 12 megapixel. Um, we have four LAN ports along with two fiber optic ports if, if needed. Um, you see the incoming and outgoing bandwidth there. Um, we also offer different, what's different from this one and the witness on the witness 128 channel has a built in video, uh, video wall card. Um, this model we're not offering with it. Um, it is an add on feature that you can add. Uh, there's two slots um, we do offer a, an HDMI decoder card um, with four um, HDMI outputs that are dedicated to a video wall, which is configured through the uh, CMS software. So if you have the need for that, um, I don't believe it's a, a highly used feature even on the witness line, um, but it is available um, as an add-on feature over this recorder. So just a few things um, with the recorders, um, they do come with a default password uh, of 123456. As soon as it's fired up and turned on, whether you access it through the web browser or the local interface, um, you are required to set a strong password. Uh, so it'll need to be you know, nine to 20 characters, letter numbers, and a special character. Um, so I just wanted to call that out, but again, um, you, will, it will be, you will be forced to set a strong password when, when setting these up. Um, the IP cameras are the same way. Um, when, you, when you plug them into the recorder, they will plug and play with that password. Um, no need to change them or anything. If you do end up accessing these cameras through the uh, 
the web browser, you know, through the recorder, um, you will be required to change the password as well. Um, and then required to update the, the plug and play password on that camera. So you can go ahead and move to the next slide. Yeah, I just, I just want to reiterate, that's just security best practices, right? I mean, Correct, yeah. you know, we've got that built in for your protection and for your customer's protection, that's all. Uh, for password resets, um, so one, this is a very common call that our tech support group gets. Um, again, we, we mentioned the, the benefit of peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, so using the peer-to-peer -peer service, you can log into your, your, that Star4 Live web um, URL and see your, your connected recorders. And you can actually have the ability to retrieve or recover your own passwords without calling, having to call tech support. So you can do this on the weekend if we're closed or you, know, you just forget. Um, it will email you a temporary password um, and then you can change it from there. So another added benefit to the, to the using peer-to-peer, -peer, um, one, obviously no port forwarding required. Um, and then as you can see right on the right, upper right, there's an access button um, that'll actually open up a web browser link to your recorder as well. Again, port forwarding not required for that with this line. Otherwise, if you, um, if you don't use the peer-to-peer -peer service and you have to reset the password, you'll need to call tech support with that serial number and the date on your recorder. Yeah, so again, just with the peer-to-peer, -peer, just makes it way more secure and you can see everything's easier. So from cloud updating, remote configuration, down to even resetting your own passwords uh, all through the peer-to-peer. -peer. Yes, very, very good with this line. So we mentioned the ease of use and the plug and play. Um, so they will just simply plug in, plug it to the recorder and plug in. Um, cameras on the network will be discovered um, also by the NVR. Again, just one click, one click adding, and it'll add it up to a channel. Uh, so very easy. Um, moving on to the next slide, I believe I show, um, we talked about before the compatibility with our current witness line. Um, if you're familiar with our cameras and um, they do require an activation password when activating an IP camera. So this, there is a, uh, a built-in password for the Alibi Witness line um, to activate with that. It's IPC123456 password, and that's how it be becomes a plug and play camera at that point. Um, so no, no need to um, put cameras on a LAN anymore or go through some awkward configuration and setup. Um, it's just a simple plug and play. And Norman, I believe you even um, experienced this where you, you defaulted the, your cameras to easily just come right back online, even though the cameras are already activated or even the older camera, yeah. uh, witness cameras that have 1111 as the password. Exactly right. I mean, it's as simple as me taking my witness MVR, unplugging the power, disconnecting the network ports, uh, the camera ports, and then taking my vigilant recorder, uh, plug in the network camera ports. Uh, so all of my witness cameras, I just plugged them right up. Uh, fired up the recorder. Inside the recorder, there's an option to default the camera. And the key thing is the, if the camera is brand new or if you could default it back to factory, it'll plug and play without doing anything. It'll just plug right into our, our recorder and it'll pop up the picture within uh, a short matter of time. Uh, but if you need to activate the camera, uh, you know, the one to, the, the password that you see there is, is, is the method. That was, that's the way you would, you would have to enter that in. Um, and what I also noticed, if you didn't default the camera, as long as you know the, the information, like the login information or password, I was able to integrate that into the recorder as well. So I made it very easy to take my old witness cameras, default them back to factory, allowed me to plug and play with my recorder. Uh, and then I was able to add some other Vigilant cameras that I wanted to add to the system. So I'm running, you know, say 75% witness still, and then um, the other 25% are new Vigilant line cameras. And I'm pretty much migrating over to the Vigilant line just because of the low light performance that I'm seeing. Um, and all, all without climbing a ladder. All without climbing a ladder. So that was a, that was the number one fear. Even with our witness line, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it, or with any line up out there, it's, it's dreadful. You have to go up on a ladder, get up there, find that reset button. Hopefully you don't lose that trap door like I always do. Um, but that's, it's really a pain when you have to do something like that. Uh, or you have another guy on a ladder doing it. Uh, this I was able to do all at three quarter without looking at any information. Uh, just plug it up, saw that it was online, told me a password was wrong. Let me try this IPC one, two, three, four, five, six. Boom, my cameras are online. So just very easy. We think this is a game changer. Uh, this will help you guys migrate your 
your existing cameras. Say you don't like some of our cameras, you want to buy someone else's, you could do that. Um, so just we're, we're, we're allowing, you know, whether it's our brand or someone else's brand to work with our recorders. Uh, you know, with that said, you might not have all support features, you know, certain analytics from a third party might not be supported. Uh, but, you know, more than likely we'll, we'll support getting you video and then some type of basic motion in most cases. So it's an awesome feature that Patrick, for sure. Yep. I noticed I kind of already kind of touched on uh, just ease of, ease of adding cameras on the, on the network. You can see it kind of discovers cameras um, in the lower half of the, of the recorder there interface and you just click that plus sign and, and add them. Um, and I mentioned earlier the, the, the three streams of these recorders um, offer um, and the cameras offer. Um, so you basically you can dedicate a, your, your mainstream, your high quality megapixel stream to your hard drive. Um, and then you view it on your local monitor with that secondary stream and maybe like a D1 resolution or it could even be lower if you wanted. But in that third stream, as long as you're recording um, the third stream, you can view both live view and playback through the mobile app. Um, so it reduces, reduces bandwidth and streaming. Um, and that's how we were able to get away with the, say the lower outgoing bandwidth restraints um, is that third stream. And you can see that on the next slide, I actually kind of show a, a, um, the interface, the web interface viewing, you know, setting those, those three streams. Um, you'll know, see at the very top of that storage mode, it, it defaults to the main and third stream. So it will record both the main stream and that third stream it really doesn't take up that much that much storage space because that third stream is so small. Um, you see the resolution down there; it's a stiff resolution, at 128 bit rate, so very very small. Um, but it just helps out with when you're remote viewing. Um, if you're especially if you have an internet um, restraints on your upload and download. This is sort of a collage of some features that I've wanted to kind of point out. Um, Playback, um, you can you know narrow down your playback. You can search by a tag, an event, or in a smart. You can, you can do a smart search. Um, you see in the upper right, that there's a certain event you can search by. So say if you're using human body detection, um, whereas you typically say a motion detection or even continuous recording would just fill up the entire timeline, and you you know kind of have to sit there and watch through the playback video. This allows you to to find your video you know, quicker, you know, if you only want to search by human body detection, um, it'll narrow down those, those events on your timeline. So you're not constantly, you know, viewing and searching. So it reduces that time. Um, also an added feature is that merge and download, um, you go back on it. Yeah. You're, if you were to, to download multiple clips, um, you can merge them into one single file if you, if you chose to. A lot yeah. of that's right. I mentioned the player, but I was actually wrong. It's actually in the unit. It has the option to merge the files. Right. Which is really cool. So good, good features. Yeah, and the, the common theme here is just ease of use, right? The, the team's been really diligent about making sure this line is super easy to use, really intuitive, and has powerful features built into it. Yeah, so I mean, if you're used to witness, it's it's going to be because you already tell it's very intuitive. It looks like it's, it's similar. It's just we have other added features or, or things that we can do now. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of showing the the uh, human body detection. If you have that enabled, um, you can see the, the live view of that example picture in the lower left. There's a green box will indicate on that on that human walking. Um, so it would it would ignore say trees blowing in the wind or you know animals, vehicles, things like that. Um, you know, just helps with the um, accuracy and reducing false alarms. And of course, doing playback and searching would be a lot quicker. Yeah, especially if you're getting any kind of email notification. Um, if you guys have done that before, you guys probably noticed you almost got your Gmail account locked up because you got too many false alarms. This will help reduce that. That's correct, yeah. And here's the uh, sort of the overall specs on the uh, our hybrid line, um, they do operate kind of. They do record in a in a light mode. Um, eight megapixel cameras are only supported on on certain channels, um, and depending on what model you have, um, if you channel just channel one on their four on the four channel, the eight channel is a, has it available or supports it on channels one and two, and the sixteen channel supports it on one through four. Um, so it does accept eight megapixel cameras. Um, 
only on certain channels though. Otherwise you can put five megapixel cameras on, on all channels if you, if you wanted to. Um, it will record in that light um, resolution and frame rate, um, but your live view will actually be the, the full, full resolution. Um, uh, the addition, because they are hybrid units, you can't add IP cameras to them. Um, so then there, there's your options too for the four channel, four for the eight, eight for the 16. Um, different, a difference between these models and the witness line, um, the witness line offers to trade analog channels for IP cameras, IP channels. Um, these, this line does not offer that. So what you see is what you get as far as IP channel count. Um, you, you cannot, you know, take away say four channels on a, four analog channels and, and add in four additional IP channels. So I just wanted to call that out. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, I, I had that wrong. Um, you can actually trade all those channels out. I don't know. I see it now. Yep. Yeah. So you can make the entire unit an MVR if you want. Um. That's correct. Yeah. Not really recommended, but yes, you can. Um, you know, all have one RCA audio input, um, but they do support audio over coax cameras, which we can, we'll talk about here in a second. Um, and this is just showing you um, what you're going to see on live view and playback. Um, it does the live view will be that full say five megapixel um, and frame rate and then the playback that's yeah, actually the, the light recording. So we can go to the next slide. There are uh, some VCA options on these um, just the intrusion detection and in the, the cross line um, only one channel supported on the four channel and up to two channels on the eight and 16. Um, you can en enable both the intrusion and the cross line detection on a single camera simultaneously, um, but it's only one channel um, or two, depending on your, on your model. So um, there's a limitation on that. Um, if you have IP cameras added to the unit, this does not affect any of the analog channels. Um, whatever analytics the IP camera supports, um, the recorder will support it as well. So um, it'll have no effect on how many analog channels you can enable the VCA. Moving on. So as I just mentioned, the uh, audio over coax. Um, currently, we do not offer any audio over coax cameras. Um, when we do, we will eventually. Um, you can connect a, a camera that has audio built in, a microphone built in that camera, and it'll actually transmit along the coax cable back to the recorder. Um, it'll be supported on all channels on that recorder um, up to you know, the, the 1,300 feet there. Um, so no need to, to run additional cables or, you know, it's a, a single microphone, for example, because it only has one RCA input. Um, you can't actually add um, an audio or coax camera on each, each camera if you choose. Uh, this shows our, our, our Vigilant uh, toolbox here. It's kind of our all-in-one um, tool set. Um, It'll discover devices on your network. Um, you can conf configure the devices. Um, you can do certain channel um, settings, configurations, uh, motion settings, things like that. Uh, firmware upgrading. Um, there's an option, like you see there, you have to log in to the camera before you can make any changes. Um, but once you log in, you're, feel, you're free to do anything that this the, the toolbox offers. Um, I'll do the next slide. I'll show you the like the multiple options here, like the device configuration. So you can change the, the device name, change the time, daylight savings, your network settings, DNS, um, any port settings. So um, it does offer you to do this um, without, say, logging into a web browser. Um, some, some quick, easy options here. Um, here's some image um, channel configurations, um, brightness, contrast, things like that, motion settings. Um, if you want to reduce your, your channel parameters, um, such as bandwidth, or sorry, excuse me, a resolution and frame rate, um, as well as adding any sort of a, a display overlay or text overlay. So here there's a, it's showing you the two options for, for firmware upgrading. Um, one, you can do it locally. Um, if you have a firmware, you say load it on a flash drive or on that, on that PC. You can upgrade that way, or you know, actually check online for a uh, for the for latest version. If it's already there, it'll tell you on the latest. If it's the one available, you'll have the option to uh, to upgrade as well. So, um, 
peer to peer again must be enabled on that recorder um, to, to use that feature. But again, it is another place, another option for firmware upgrading um, from, a, from a local PC. And then with maintenance, um, you can do things like restoring the factory defaults, um, exporting the diagnostics file, um, import, export settings, um, configuration settings, things like that. You can utilize this tool for that. Go to the next slide. Um, this is showing you, you can actually add um, IP cameras to an NVR using this tool as well. Um, so maybe let's say you don't have a monitor on there and you didn't, you don't want to log into the browser. You just want to do this real quick. Um, this will discover, you know, any cameras that you have on the network and then just simply import them into that recorder there on the right hand side. So it, another feature of this tool um, to, to add IP cameras to the recorder itself. And then finally, the, the last part of this tool is a, is a calculator. Um, this could both calculate, um, you know, your total bandwidth um, as well as the hard drive, you know, how many days of storage you get on your hard drive, or perhaps you want to use it to figure out how many hard drives do I need. Um, we can do that um, with this tool. You can manually um, add cameras into this to configure it, um, or it'll actually search and, and find cameras on, on your network and that you can add that are already Say, you know, all the settings basically import into the calculator. So there's two options of, of setting that up. Um, it's a good, good feature to see um, as far as total storage or needed storage if you need to add more. And Patrick, can you confirm on the toolbox, they, it, witness recorders and IP cameras do pop up on the search tool and so on, right? Or uh, yeah. Yes, um, there's a, so we don't know where to pass the slide, but there's a, there's three check boxes. It can search by, by, IP camera um, by NVR or by uh, ONSBIF right. devices. Yeah, up there. So on the upper yeah. left there, yeah. It was so, just so, so the other, any ONSBIF um, devices, it'll show up in that other um, filter if you have that filter enabled. Um, in my example here, I just had the NVR checked, but if you had that, that other check, it would um, witness um, devices would show up. Um, configuration, I haven't, um, done any, any configuration with the witness side, but they do show up. They do show up, yeah. That's, that's one of the Q&A's. That camera, so to speak. Cool. Appreciate that. And this is our CMS. Um, we kind of like this. Um, it's very similar um, maybe to our to our witness CMS. Um, personally, it's, it looks a lot cleaner to me. Um, very easy to use as well. Um, it's kind of the main control panel, and you'll see all your different modules there you have, which you can arrange in whatever order you, you choose there, but um, that's how you can launch a new uh, new module to the new tab in the upper section. Um, this has a default password to it when you first download and install it of, of just one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, you can change that as well. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, we'll show some other features. Um, this is the, the device management. So this will discover devices on your network on the lower section there, and then you can add them up to your to your managed devices up top. Um, there's also a way to, to log in to your peer-to-peer -peer cloud um, account from this, from this page as well. Um, and it'll import any uh, any peer-to-peer -peer devices you have associated with that account. So <clears throat> this can be used, um, again, without port forwarding um, remotely. So the next one, um, here's an example of the live view. Um, you'll see your recorders listed on the left. Um, you can create groups and group them in a certain um, group if you wanted. Um, and it shows cameras like online or offline. Um, of course, you can create custom views and things like that. So um, this is what the live view screen looks like. And then here's a, here's a playback screen as well. Um, and the mobile app, um, these are kind of some of the screenshots of what it looks like. Your kind of main menu section on the left there. Um, you see, you know, you have a live view playback, your, your devices. Um, um, it'll show you if you have any alarm push notifications, you'll see by that red indicator. Um, it means you have a, an alert of some part, notification of some kind. Um, and then remote configuration, which will we'll show. Um, but this is what uh, you can expect it to, to look like when you're viewing with live view playback. And then there's a calendar when, when searching. Um, 
So if we go to the next group for some more slides. And there's your device list on the left, left side, um, many devices added. Um, you'll see there's an orange indicator, the icon there. That means um, those, those recorders are added locally with a local IP address. Um, the, one, the blue ones actually are cloud and you know, peer-to-peer added devices. Um, so we'll kind of indicate how the, how the recorder was added to the, to the app. And then when you hit those three dots on the right, it'll show you the, the screen that, that second to the left, um, you know, start live view. You can do a speed test out for the site. Peer-to-peer -peer upgrade, that's where you would see a, a blue indicator if you had a firmware update, whether again for the MVR itself or any IP cameras associated or added to that MVR. Um, and then alarm notifications on the right is where you could filter um, different notifications. Um, the remote configuration here, this is a nice feature. So you can do this remotely. Um, you can, you know, enable your motion detection, draw your, your area, you know, set the, the, the time when you want it to um, record that motion sensitivity, um, set up a schedule as well. You can um, do it either, you know, continuous or recording on motion. And this is just a video of uh, what our, our vigilant player looks like. It's very similar to the, the witness um, BS player. Um, so it also will be kind of dedicated to the, the BS, or sorry, excuse me, vigilant uh, video that's either exported or downloaded. All right, that's a great overview. I apologize for any background noise here. Um, a couple quick questions. So will vigilant CMS work on witness systems? Yes, yeah, we answered that one, but I believe some guys missed it, but yes, it will. No, no, so you're talking about adding a, a witness recorder to the CMS software? Oh, uh, no, that no, will no not, sorry, that will not sorry. Work. That, that we're talking about the tools, sorry. If you had a, a, uh, a witness camera connected or added to a, a vigilance recorder, you can import that, that vigilant recorder into CMS and that, that camera would follow along. Um, or you know, any on camera for that matter, as long as the recorder itself is a vigilant. But um, the recorder or camera or, or standalone, they, you cannot add those to, this, to the vigilant CMS. So there's no integration there. All right, uh, how many channels are available in the software? Um, yeah, have that here. Um, so there's no no restriction as far as adding devices, local devices. Um, you can also add up to to, to five thousand cloud devices, but however, only sixty four devices can be online with with the software at that time. Um, and there's a way to kind of choose if you if you have more than sixty four. Um, five hundred and twelve local channels plus the five hundred twelve cloud channels. So you can get up to up to a thousand, you know, ten twenty four total channels can be added to that software. So hopefully that, that kind of answers the question. Yeah, ten twenty five. I think it's same on the the witness side as well. Uh, and then one more question here: What's the difference between the CMS and Star for Live for installers, not end users, but installers? I'm sorry, you repeat that. Uh, what's the difference between the CMS and Star for Live for installers? So Star for Live is the peer to peer service. Um, so that's where they have, how the peer to peer operates. It goes to that that server. Um, the CMS software is just, you know, a local client software you can install on a PC um, and then add your recorders. Um, so the Star for Live, there is a website, just go to starforlive.com and you would log in with your, your peer to peer account that you created. You can create an account from the, from the website as well, or you can do it through the mobile app. Um, and just that's for the Star for Live um, allows you to view, you can view your cameras. Um, I'm sorry, view your devices on your account in that web page. Mm -hmm. Again, you can recover your password from that web page. You can um, access to the, the web, web browser. Um, again, without port forwarding, I'd like to stress that port forwarding is not required. So if, if you're one of these uh, dealers that are just, you know, that, that, that's all you know is port forwarding, this is kind of a good time to get away from it. Um, I'm sure you run into situations where maybe you don't know the password to log into that router or maybe there's you know, certain, you know, ports are being blocked for some reason um, when doing the port forwarding and you have to get in, involved with the internet provider. Um, this is a way around all that and you can do it. You don't even have to, to call tech support. It's very, very simple to set up and 
add your recorders to the to the mobile app and to that peer to peer account. Um, so, so can you um, add witness devices to the Star for Live? No, Star for Live is dedicated only to the vigilant line. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so again, it'd be IP cameras to the recorder, and then they could add the recorder, the vigilant recorder, to Star for Live. Correct. Gotcha. That's good. Okay. Great. Great answer. And then, on the 128 channel NVR and the video wall encoder. Can you talk a little bit more about what that encoder does? And then if somebody orders the encoder, does it come separate? What if they want it pre-installed? And will, you know, will that option be kind of ready to use if it's pre-installed into the NVR? So I'm sure we, we have no problem installing it for you um, before it ships out. But um, the setup um, can, really can't be done until it's on site. Um, and the setup and configuration, again, is all performed through the CMS software. There's mm -hmm. a, a video wall module built mm -hmm. into that. Um, it's basically, so say you have four monitors. Um, so more HDMI, the, more HDMI outputs. Yeah, it has four HDMI outputs and you can you know, connect, say, four, four monitors to it, uh, or right. up to four. Um, you won't have any mouse control or you know, menu access through these. So it's not used as, say, a, a secondary monitor for, for personal use. It's more of a display set. Um, to show, say, say an entryway to a building or, or something like that, or a, a command center, um, just to show an overall. You know, you can you can sort your cameras in a certain order or, or you know a certain aspect on those uh, on those monitors. So um, it's kind of the kind of the basic for it. Um, again, it's just a, a display um, feature. Um, yeah, and the reason why on the witness side, we automatically add that card default, but the cost of the card for a lot of our dealers that don't require the multiple HDMI mm -hmm. or don't require the additional bandwidth, they ask us, hey, we don't need that card, but you're this much more than, say, the next guy. So that way, this is the reason why we kind of offer this separate, just from feedback from dealers, was, hey, can you just rip that card out, help me reduce the cost in the box, and then I can add it for certain projects if I need right. more. Because yeah, it's it's a it's a niche solution and that can be added to the NDR. Yeah, so and just that makes a lot of sense. Versus we add a default, it just it'll add a, yeah. a lot more in cost. Right. Yeah. right, gotcha. Okay, well, guys, I, I appreciate you guys running through that quick. Again, we went through a ton of information, rolled through all the line card, talked about cameras, recorders, functionality of the software, tools. Uh, so I, we know there's a lot of lot, lot covered. If you guys are have any more questions or are, are super interested in learning more, contact your dedicated account manager. That, that's why we have such such senior folks servicing your accounts. Uh, they're they're ready and able to answer any of these questions. If they if you guys th throw a curveball and they can't answer it, Patrick and Norman are the guys they will go to to, to figure out. Uh, the right answer for, for your questions, okay? We're super excited about this line. We, we really feel like we've identified a new line that we can bring on that has a lower total cost for you guys, but is still super feature rich. It gives you guys great optics, chipsets, uh, great capabilities and functionality, um, and, and, and will really help you guys uh, really more easily manage and install these these systems because the UI is so much easier easier to, to use and, and ultimately is going to be a great um, addition to our overall alibi line. So Norman and Patrick, you know, it does, goes without saying that we appreciate the work you guys put into making this line come, come together so we could bring it to market and more importantly to help out those dealers who are uh, servicing the, the government and have an option for those guys right now to order product that will be NDA compliant from a technical perspective. So uh, kudos to you guys and we appreciate you guys rolling through the line today. And again, uh, if anybody has any uh, additional questions, uh, reach out to your dedicated account manager. We want to help you guys grow your business with this new Vigilant line. So we will look forward to seeing you guys next time on our next Alibi webinar series and we appreciate the time today. Thanks. Thank you guys.